Have you ever wondered where the television signal you are watching is coming from? Here's the host of True North, Patsy Wiggins. It was the fall of 1947 when more than 200 forest fires scorched dozens of Maine towns. Among the areas devastated by the fire was Maine's crowning jewel, Bar Harbor. Bill Moraldo takes us back 50 years to the year Maine burned. Already there are about 1,500 people, refugees here from the Mount Desert area. The Red Cross, however, tells me that they are set up so that they can handle as many as 6,000 people in this one town and small villages surrounding it as they come in. On October 17, 1947, the call came in to the Bar Harbor Fire Department. A small marsh grass fire was burning seven miles from the outskirts of town. By the time it was out, 17,000 acres had been blackened. 237 island homes were gone, and half of Bar Harbor was destroyed. Mount Desert Island would never be the same. Even though half a century has passed since the fire swept through here, the forest itself is only at a midpoint in its recovery. The needle-bearing conifers still acquiesce to the faster-growing aspen and birch. Perhaps in another 50 years, it will have reached maturity, and the forest, in a sense, will have forgotten the fire of 1947. But the people who lived through it, they will never forget. They've been eating sandwiches for days and days, as you know, and sandwiches, that's one thing that don't send in any more sandwiches. These people have stood all the sandwiches they can. So this truck right here saw action in oh, 1947. Oh yes, oh yes, absolutely, right in, the, right in the midst. Howell Burns and Henry Brown were college students at the time and had grown up on the island. News of the fire sent both of them rushing back home to assist the other volunteer firefighters. It's just burnt in my mind, that, that huge wave, that fire just rolling, and, and a house, it exploded. It had to explode, it was gone while I'm telling this story. Yeah, they claim it created its own wind even. Yes, oh it did, it did, Henry. Almost like a, a hurricane, or uh, uh, whatever you want it to call it. It was strange, you'd hear this. It's like a uh, bunch of freight trains, everybody told me. A bunch of freight trains or, or, or um, burners going. It had to be a feeling almost of helplessness. Absolutely. Hoses started to burn, even with water in them, the canvas on the hoses started to burn. The nozzle was so hot you couldn't hang on to it anyway. And we literally, thinking back on it now, we re really ran for our lives. In the background, you probably can hear sounds of motors, all sorts of trucks here for firefighting, cars and men all standing by in case the fire moves in this direction so everyone has been alerted. And so, show me where your, where was your house? It was right there. Your That's house the right foundation here. of our house. We had a nice place. Florence Ames was a telephone operator working the night shift as firemen battled the blaze. Her own home was among those destroyed by the flames. You were going all night long. People knew the fire was coming and they were calling in all night long. Where is it? Where is it? It was strange when we, they ordered us out. My two older sons were out watering the house then and my oldest son came in and went right up on the third floor. He came down with, ordinarily you'd think he might come down with a toy or something. He came down with his um, clarinet in one hand, violin in the other. And my, my younger son, he didn't even pick up a toy. He had a brand new bike out in the yard and that burned. When will you forget? Never. I'll never forget. The wharf was loaded. The pier in town was just loaded. And we just waited there patiently, seeing the fire at a distance. It looked so much nearer than it was. And then finally they 
said that we could leave, and it was just a steady stream of cars right from the wharf right up to Ellsworth. Now I must wait until it's over. I mean, I know that boats are standing off in the harbor here to take the local people that are left in town. And beyond that, I guess we're just open to stop it here. What did it look like to you? I suppose, it, you know, really, you can almost say the same idea as the atomic bomb that hit in Japan, really. That fire was so hot, I literally say the rocks burnt. And it, and it looked just like, like uh, Henry said, it looked like Hiroshima. It, exactly. Like That's that. the only way you can describe when you yeah. see all those, just, I so, mean, there were pictures everywhere, at the time, time, different newspapers, but. Just nothing but chimneys, it's, it's, walls, down trees. It was terrible. Actually, in our cellar, uh, it was still smoldering. And uh, it was it just looked terrible. You wondered what you were going to do. Ellsworth fireman Joe Lucini used his 8 millimeter camera to film the devastation. Many of the family homes would be rebuilt, but several of the island's world famous resort mansions were lost forever. I guess probably that perhaps Henry and I know myself was used to the slower pace of the uh, summer folks coming and open, getting into their cottages and the butlers and maids and chauffeurs and that's what we would see. And today it's, uh, it's altogether different. It's a faster pace and uh, that's, what I, that's what I see most and I think this is a direct result of the of uh, the times uh, and the fire and the fire yeah each time on my leaving home i run back to my mother's arms well, would you say at this moment this is the worst fire on the island now mr james i believe at this moment it possibly is the worst fire as far as i know By the way, some of the film footage you just saw in that piece had never been broadcast before now. Amazing footage.